So, just showed up. This is the flated air topper. It is for the Ford Mavic in, in particular. Um, they call it a small short bed and they kind of have a sort of a picture here on the box. So I'm gonna open it up, inflate it, put it on the truck, take it a ride on the highway and just see how things work in general. Try and show you everything I, I can since I'll be working one-handed with this camera. So, uh, opening up the box, see uh, right away, if you have ever purchased a uh, stand-up paddleboard before, you're gonna recognize a few of these things, like a repair kit, probably has some sealing equipment and a wrench for working with the air valve, and an air pump which you will use to inflate it, just like you do a stand-up paddleboard or even uh, some inflatable kayaks will have the same setup as well. This is one that does not have... <sighs> hmm, interesting. High capacity double action, high capacity, high pressure single. Interesting. That explains what this little red valve here at the top is. I have a stand-up paddleboard that does not explain it. I just figured that out. So, let's go ahead and get more out of the box and find out what we got. So open after we get everything out of the box, we can see here we have our bag, which actually has the cap in a folded down position right here inside a storage bag, which is nice. This is also very similar to inflatable stand-up paddleboard because Almost all of them come with some sort of a backpack bag just like this to allow you to, let's say, take your stand-up paddleboard easily on the bus to go to the beach or the lake, or maybe you're trying to get back into that remote mountain lake to go fishing where no one ever has taken a boat before. And if you're strong, you can haul this thing. I don't plan on hauling it anywhere but in and out of my basement, but it will be nice to have. And then, interesting, they show a higher top, even though I know this is the flush top based on what I paid. <clears throat> and then we have our windows. Nice that they're rolled up and kept in paper so they don't stick or fuse or get marred in any way. And of course we have our pump, as I mentioned before. This is the nice air fitting that locks in, which is much nicer than the old Boston valves, which always sort of a struggle oh it has an in and an out that's nice for deflating it completely when you want to fit it back inside of that bag and it has an air gauge so we can tell exactly what pressure we've inflated it to because I'm sure they give a recommendation somewhere so I don't see one here interesting and then we have our anchor straps now I don't know any of this from reading directions as much as I know this from watching videos that they've shared so these are used to anchor it to the truck. They hook onto the underside of the bed rails. And then our repair. Well, our repair kit has a little bit more than I expected. It does have the self-adhesive, um, or maybe they're not self-adhesive, but they're patches. You can tear it, rip it, put a hole in it. We've got some of the cement that you would use probably to put them on. Some extra hooks here, I'll have to find out what those are for. And of course, the valve for dealing with the inflation valve if you need to, I don't know, replace an O-ring or something like that. So, let's open it up. Open this up. Let's see what we got. It's interesting in checking out this bag because you'll see that there's a lot of slack here. And I am guessing, since they're not expecting us to have a giant vacuum pump the way uh, they do at the factory to suck this thing down flat that they're expecting this to be a little bit bulkier when I'm storing it in the future. So that's nice that they have those kinds of uh, extra. And it's not like some of those sleeping bags and tents you get from cheap places like Walmart where you're never gonna get that thing back in the bag no matter how you try and just go buy a backpack and stick it in instead. So we get those two buckles. These are the big over flops. Then we got these smaller buckles, like that, three of them. And 
and wow, this whole thing is wrapped in plastic, so now we get something else to open up and get rid of. So after ripping the plastic open, you see it's nicely packed. We get some of our roof tie downs here, I believe. Those are four. Foam protecting the corners and edges. And get all this stuff out of here, get the plastic out of it. And here's a bunch of edges with Velcro, which tells me they're probably windows or the back flap. We'll find out. So this is the advantage to it, as I see it, and the reason I went ahead and purchased one. I was no way ever going to spend the $3,000 that the fiberglass tops for these um, trucks would cost. I haven't seen one much cheaper than that. And the likelihood of ever finding one used would be years down the road. And I would like to have this for right now. I mean, recently we did a family trip and I do have a roll up tonneau cover. I was able to stretch over everything, but we still end up leaving stuff behind because it just wouldn't fit with four of us. And that was including putting stuff in the back seat and everywhere else. So I want to have a way to pile it up to the roof if I need to and still tow stuff. So. This will give me that the rest of the time it can stow in a nice small package like this and it's not that heavy like i would have a hard time picking up the end of one of those fiberglass toppers with one hand and here i can do that with this and it's just like the idea of why you get an inflatable kayak or an inflatable paddleboard it's not that they're great or they're the best i'm not saying this is a horrible product but they store in a really small space that uh, you'll never get the real thing into. If you're an apartment dweller, somebody like that, or you just want to have it along and maybe you want to set it up later on, this is a, something you can do. So I'm opening this up, opening it up, just unfolding it flat here, and I suggest maybe doing this on a patch of grass or a tarp, probably not a driveway. Um, there's the inflation valve, and this is actually nice because it so this is aft. My cap is completely flipped as if I flipped it over 180 right now. That is actually right in the back at the top, which is really nice. So we're going to go ahead and inflate this and see what it looks like. This obviously here is the window from the cab into the bed, which is nice to see as well. So let's go ahead and hook up the pump. So this pump is nice in that it tells you inflate. If you flip it over, deflate so obviously we want to inflate we could use deflate for when we want to suck this thing flat to make it easier to fold <clears throat> and it's one of the ways you can tell a cheaper stand-up paddleboard pump from a nicer one because the nice ones give you deflate option so here it is on the inflate and that just is a normal thread like a garden hose we'll go over here to this end this has a bayonet style cap and a bayonet style hose. And you simply want to engage. You want to do want to make sure the valve, okay, I just that's how you press it. When you want to let the air out and just let it go, you push it in and quarter turn, and it will stay in like that. And then turn it so it's popped back up and it will hold air. And then we engage the bayonet by pushing and turning. Now we see how long it takes to inflate this thing. And believe me, if you're somebody who gets tired easily, it might be a good idea to buy a uh, electric pump for doing this. So, set the phone right here, and we'll go ahead and start inflating. Sometimes taking that cap out I should reduce the effort. I'm not 100% sure about the flow, but I know I found it easier with my standard paddleboard. And it's going to take a while before it even seems like anything is happening with these because there's so much volume to fill. But you can watch the uh, timer on this. 
you'll get an idea of how long this is going to take you to actually get it inflated. I'll cut this video afterwards just to show the highlights of how long it took. Alright, and right here next to the filler it says inflation 5 to 8 psi. So I'm going to look at that here on this gauge and I'll know where to go. Usually you can tell anyways with these because that's when the pump gets already really hard to move. And you're actually having to lean on it with both arms. But still just slowly coming along here. Start to see some movement. like the roof inflates before the rest of it, but considering that it's folded, I'm not surprised. So remember if you ever want to set this up, and let's say you forgot your pump, if you find anybody with a stand-up paddleboard, you can use their pump. So this is a standard fitting that every stand-up paddleboard would have. I'm going to have to look, but I would really be surprised if somebody hasn't made an adapter to a shop vac outlet for this. That would plug right into that. Because that would be the best thing to have versus a standalone expensive pump that you can only use for your inflatable toys. Alright, now we get some motion here. If it's taking too long for you, skip ahead. Walls are pretty much up. Forward. Ah, the forward wall is inflated separately. I will say some of these seams are looking a little different. Uh, let me change the angle of the camera here so we can take a look the way I'm seeing it. But some of these seams, just the way the vinyl is put together, it might just be a function of the way it's built. Since the stand-up paddleboard only has outside corners, no inside corners. But it is interesting. I'm going to leave this on here for maybe a week. Because I really want to see 45 is PSI. That's bar, that's PSI. So 5 to 8. Alright, looking at this right now, I'm up into that range. I gotta get it past the 4 there. And that's the 8. I'm 5 to 8, so probably that short white line there is five and eight is the maximum so and then the front wall is inflated separately which is interesting but I guess it makes sense rather than having to do all kinds of weird changes and stuff it probably makes it a little bit easier so uh, as I was saying, I'm going to inflate this, I'm going to leave it on the bed of my truck for uh, uh, at least a week. Just because I want to get a feel for how this stands up to the hot weather of summer. And normal driving around. Oh, we're getting close here. This actually pumps up faster than my stand-up paddleboard does. I think I have to go to a higher pressure on the stand-up paddleboard. Yeah, i got to go to one one and a half bar or something like that. This is only five to eight PSI, so not nearly as hard to do as a stand-up paddleboard. Even though I would bet the volume is pretty close to the same. All right, we're just getting up to five here. All right, we're right in the middle. 
six and a half ish, seven. I'll call that good. Disconnect the hose. Remember, as I just said that valve is shut. It will pop shut, and you obviously want to lock the cap. Otherwise, you bump it, and it'll let air out. But that makes sure it doesn't. And then, let's go up here, and go ahead and get the front wall. Now, I'm sure if you were getting one for a full-size truck, this will be heavier. The Maverick, as you know, if you know Maverick, has a four and a half foot bed. So I believe it is the same width as like a Ranger or Tacoma or any of those smaller size trucks. Um, so of course, less material, less weight. I like this nice heavy duty rubber reinforcement goes around the rim because this is of course where it's going to be touching the vehicle all right that's right up to a just about that inflated very quickly so with that in place next thing is oh let's not get the string caught under there let's mount it on the bed so it is nice to see that Flipping it over, here's your rings. Maybe you want to put a kayak on the roof, something like that. Um, and you got handles, so this will make it easy to pick up and carry around, or if you have two people, to even put it on the edges of the bed. Just to show you how easy it is to carry and move around. I'm not a ridiculous weightlifter or anything else. And it balances. Pretty easily, does not hurt my head. Even thinking, you could use this. Huh. I hope. We wanted something to float around on the lake in. I don't know if it would hurt it or not. We'd have to talk to the company and find out what they'd have to say. But just something funny to think about. So let's get a closer look at this now. All right. It is cab height, gives you a nice smooth, nothing sticking up that's going to cause drag, you get little bumps here and there, but nothing ridiculous. And on the inside, you can see where our forward window is, there's even a couple little pouches there for, it's like for storage. And here's the flaps. For our rear window and the velcro which might be coming loose a little bit here yeah, i hope that isn't we'll have to take a look at that i'll let flated know about it um, and if you ever want to know your serial number is burned right there into that pat that patch next to your rear inflation valve and it sits i didn't like the taller one i didn't want to spend the extra money for it i got this they had a special, uh, it was 20% off. If you bought it the first week, they had them in production. So I got this for $800 and some change um, with prices and whatever. Um, but it's definitely worth it. This is otherwise $1,100 unit and the other one is even more. Um, let's go ahead and strap it down. Cause really like the look of it then we're gonna take it for a ride on the highway and I'm gonna leave my camera in the back here and we'll just see about flutter and bouncing and um, just anything that could be an issue anything you might need to know about it if you wanted to buy this for your own truck and of course you want to make sure that uh, you store your pump and your repair materials and it's nice where this bag be used very nicely to hold them. So before we uh, strap anything down, of course, we need to put on the back window. This is the loop side, this is the hook side. And the reason they do that is to have this flap range from ever having a chance to 
and running down because Velcro is not 100% sure the way of sealing. But gravity always wins. And that's what this flap does. It makes sure that the water can only go the way that gravity wants to direct it. So lay the top in, flap over, keep out water. trouble maybe they'll add that in the future so front window I'm gonna flip it back around so we can strap it down so looking up inside of here I notice we got two of these tie downs are red the other two are black tells me they're probably important so as I said again say I did not find any directions for this there might be a video but I have not seen even a QR code to scan it if there is um, be nice actually inflated if Just like the way you put the serial number up there put a QR code with the instructions because You know some people aren't mechanically inclined and even if you have instructions If they're not like sewn in like they were doing tents and sleeping bags and things like that You're probably gonna forget the next time anyways and if there was a QR code right on the outside of it or in, inside somewhere You could never lose it but uh, I'm guessing those red ones got to be strapped first. Now, they do give me some hooks, but being a Maverick, I have all kinds of tie-down hooks in here. So I bet I'll put two in the front there, and then we'll figure out the rest as we go. Okay, so it turns out that piece of paper inside the lid was my instructions, but they are extremely minimal and very small print or someone who is turning 50 this year that's hard to read um, thankfully I got a camera that can kind of zoom in but one of the things I'm finding is there were exactly two hooks in the repair tube and that's it so I'm really thinking Flated forgot to give me six of those hooks to allow me to attach it to the bed so I'm going to have to use those two repair one, those two out of the repair thing because I have not found them anywhere in here. In the bag, I don't know if there's a pocket I missed. I don't think so. I would expect they would have come in that clear plastic bag that held the straps, and they weren't there. So we're gonna dig through everything here, and I can make this work because I have the cargo management system. Came with my uh, spray and bed liner, um, and I can adjust them to match up and tie to that but that's obviously not what they intended. So just for the fun of it, my son has a Nissan Frontier. It's my old truck. This is the model with the six foot bed and the king cab. And just for the fun of it, I threw my cap on his Frontier. And what I'm finding is, I don't think this would even sit on the rails because that pretty much is where the edge of the bed rail is. It doesn't match the height of the cap. And it would be falling in on both sides. So this is very Maverick specific. I don't even know if there's another vehicle that would fit. So if you're buying a Maverick one, you're buying it for a Maverick. <laughs> 